Stephen, welcome to the uh, Growth Hackers Dublin. Thank you very much. My understanding is you're giving a, a presentation to the group today. Yes. Would you mind just giving us a quick intro as to what you're trying to achieve in, in your presentation and maybe a little bit about your business as well? Sure, yeah. Well, I work for a company called Olitico. Uh, we're a social media monitoring and analysis company. So essentially, we tell our clients what's being said about them on the internet and hopefully uh, help them to make better decisions as a result of the information. Okay. So today, mm -hmm. we're going to look at, rather than look at a, a company or a client or a business, we're going to look at what happens when you start listening to what people are asking for on the internet. Okay. So we've done some research, I've been continuing some research over the last two years into phrases like I wish someone invented or I wish someone built or I wish someone made and looking at the extensions of those to see what is it that actually people want us to make for them. Okay. Um, and there's a mixture of the very serious mm -hmm. um, and the very light, um, and hopefully some people will get some inspiration from the, the talk. Fantastic. So just let me ask you, um, what's the one thing that companies should be doing as a result of getting insights from social media listening? Um, answering questions is probably my, my, my number one piece. It's amazing how many people ask questions online that go completely unanswered. Um, and they don't always know that you've got a Twitter handle, they don't always know you've got a Facebook page. So the questions aren't always asked directly to you. But they might use your name in a different way. Um, and if you listen in the right way, you can find incredible information and become a really useful um, asset to your potential customers. Very good. Well, listen, Stephen, delighted you're here today. Have fun with the presentation, and we look forward to meeting you again soon. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks for that. And uh, growth hacking, and this is probably, maybe this is aimed at people who are at the very start of the growth phase. Maybe. Maybe it's people who are thinking about setting up um, starting a new business um, and hopefully over the next 15 odd minutes, 15-20, um, uh, you'll get some inspiration um, and hopefully a, a couple of smiles too. So I work for a company called Olitico uh, and essentially we listen to an awful lot of conversation online. We're a social media monitoring and analysis company. Uh, so we tell our clients what's being said about them online. And most of our clients want to know these things. They want to know if they're loved or hated. So we heard about the trolling and there's lots of hate online. There's also loads of love. Loads of people say really nice things about things like Halo. Um, does anyone know who this is? Ford. Ford, yeah, good work. Um, so this is Henry Ford. Um, and Ford was a, I suppose, a genius, really. And for a number of reasons. But one of the quotes, and he's got loads of great quotes, um, that I like the best is, if I'd asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. And Ford's genius was to know that they didn't want a faster horse, they just wanted to travel faster. So he gave them a mechanical horse and he invented the car. Um, and it, it changed the world. And one of the problems with customer feedback is that when you ask people what they want, when you prompt the question, people aren't always honest with you. They, they might try to be honest with you, but they're often thinking one thing, and lots of things influence what they say. So if they've had a drink or two, if you're running something with pizza and beers, they might sort of say nicer things to you in a room if they're looking for feedback. Uh, if there's a very dominant person in the room, there might be issues with that. Um, so there's a lot to be said for traditional um, market research, but what gets really interesting is when you stop asking questions and start listening to what people are already asking for. So about two and a half years ago, um, prior to the Dublin Web Summit, we were thinking in the office about things that we could look at, things that would be interesting, beyond just brands and conversations online. Um, and we started tracking the following phrases. Uh, about sort of two or three months prior to the summit, we started doing this. Um, so things like, I wish someone invented. If only there was a way to. Will someone please create? Will someone please build? And we took in total uh, 10 phrases in or around this. Um, and we've now been tracking them for over two years. So we didn't stop. We got great crack and we had re really good fun at the summit uh, with what we found. So we just kept it going. So we've been storing all this information. And we're up probably in terms of clean data. We've got over a quarter of a million results now. So we have a fairly decent stack of what it is people actually online over the last couple of years um, have asked for. And what we're going to talk about today is not just what they're asking for, but maybe even over the last couple of years, what's changed. Because people have started listening and started answering the questions and building the products that people want based on what they're talking about. So here's what we found. 
please invent is the first phrase we're going to start with. And when we started this process, we had very few clients and loads of time. So we did loads of this manually. Um, and I'm sure anyone who's at the startup phase will realize that that's often what happens. You've got loads of time to pump into it. Um, and we found gems like this. Could somebody please invent some sort of sensor to let you know there's a bloody tissue in the washing machine? <laughs> now again, I'm sure this is something a lot of you can empathize with. You know, you get to the washing machine and there's just this sea of white on the screen. And you know that the worst thing is that you can't just give it one more wash. For some reason, the little white bits take four or five washes to get out. So how great would it be um, if Nikki in uh, Victoria in Australia was able to press a button on her Zanussi um, washing machine and uh, it would tell her whether or not there were tissues in her pocket. Um, but we realized quickly as we got more clients and less time that doing this on a manual basis, going through these one by one, wasn't really sustainable, especially when we started looking at bigger numbers. So we dumped all the results for each of the phrases into um, a machine that picked out the most commonly occurring words. And we started building wordles. So in 2012, for Please Invent, this is what we found. And we take out the phrase Please Invent and this is what we're left with. So you see a pattern here and it's Dear and companies and cell phone. And this was the reason it was so big. Dear mobile phone companies, please invent an unsend my text option. <laughs> so this is a parody account of Alan Garner, um, who some of you may uh, recognize from some very well-known movies. And at the time, he had about 860,000 followers. That's well over a million now. So when he says something funny online, a lot of people retweet it. But what was interesting for us was the times people retweeted it. So we saw spikes on Saturday nights and Sunday mornings um, <laughs> when regret really started kicking in. Um, anyone here use Gmail? Has anyone ever had the need to use their recall option? Does everyone know they give you a 10 second window after you've sent your email? They don't actually send it instantly. They hold on to it. So if you click send and the person you're thinking about or writing about you've actually put in the address bar, you can grab it back. And how cool would it be if there was one of those for text messages? You click send or you do it drunkenly on a Saturday night or a Sunday morning. Um, and imagine if you could bring it back. So in 2014, when we re-looked at the data, we found lots of similar um, stories coming through. And it's not that people still want this. I mean, they do. We know that. Um, but people were robbing the jokes. So not Will Ferrell started robbing jokes from other parody accounts from earlier. Dear cell phone companies, please invent an unsend my text option. 742 retweets. So if it ain't broke, um, that's what you start um, coming through. And what we found was that when we removed the big things like that, uh, there were really interesting things around that. So scientists was a great word for us. People associate invention with scientists. If I was trying to encourage kids to study science right now, this is the kind of thing that I would be showing them. You, wanna be, you don't want to be a scientist, you want to be an inventor. You can actually invent things that people um, want. Uh, lots of people um, ask whether, whether you're listening. So that's another thing we noticed starting to come through. People actually realized that people were listening to what they said. Is anybody listening? Will someone please invent? And then there was an extension to the sentence. Um, but the two interesting words for us were windshield and music. And anyone who's maybe seen this presentation before will know what's coming up. So in 2012, Scott Elliott, someone please invent a windshield wiper that doesn't get pine needles and leaves stuck in it. Um, this is something that Scandinavian car manufacturers are um, working very hard on. Linda Meehan in 2014, can someone please invent driver window wipers? They'd be kind of handy, because you know when your driver window gets wet, you've got to roll it down typically to clear it off, and if it's still raining, you get wet. It's a bit of a mess. Imagine if there was just a wiper there that kind of went like that to the side of you. That could be really handy. Shannon Zimmerman, can someone please invent windshield wipers for glasses when it's raining? Um, probably less practical and probably not going to be built. But the reason that windshield wipers and music came together was because of Noah B, who at the time was involved in the X Factor in the UK. Can someone please invent windshield wipers that wipe in time with the music you're listening to? Now this is a thing. So Noah is important because he plays drums and the space guitar, uh, which is an interesting um, combination of things. And he's followed by influential people. And this tweet was retweeted 250 times, which is why we saw those two words appear in the word cloud. Um, but there's a group on Facebook where if this has happened to you, you can join it. So windscreen wipers being in time with the music. And we kind of thought, maybe you approach this in another way. Instead of trying to come up with music that matches, or windscreen wipers that match the music, what if you reverse engineered it? What if there was an app on your phone 
that was preloaded with 100 windscreen wiper settings for every major car manufacturer in the world. And when the rain came on and you changed your setting, you could press a button on your phone and it would auto find the song that had the right beats per minute to just match it. And you could knock yourself out, it would be amazing. In 2012, dear makers of PG Tips, can you please amend a patch so that my body can be constantly fed your wonderful products? Thank you, and we like this idea. You know, imagine going into a house and the Irish mammy comes out and says, you know, would you like a cup of tea? And you say, no, I'm on the patches. You know, I like, I like the idea of that happening. And of course, by 2014, it happened. I was thinking, I wish someone made caffeine in a patch. And then I searched online and found that product on Amazon. Thanks again, Jeff. And it's there, caffeine land, caffeine energy patches. Now you can get tea in a patch. And I wonder, back in 2012, was there someone searching for an idea who kind of went, I can do that. I can make tea in a patch and I'm gonna sell it. Um, on Amazon. Can someone please invent the opposite of a microwave? I need my beer cold now and know the freezer is not fast enough. Again, I think we often use the freezer in these situations. So you get home, it's a Friday evening, it's warm, it's the summer, we actually get a nice week. And you take your beer and it's not really cold enough, so you put it in the freezer. But the problem is you don't take it out five minutes later. You remember it 50 minutes later. And that's a disaster. Dear scientists of Earth, please invent the lightsaber already, sincerely everyone. So this probably isn't going to happen, but there's an awful lot of people who want it. So if you do have the means, there's a, a huge, 1,178 people definitely will buy the lightsaber from you. Dear Internet, can someone please invent a heated mouse? My right hand is constantly cold while my left is clamped around a cuppa. So this was early February, Rowena Neville um, sent this out. And what was interesting was that, again, it exists. This is the Seven Weapons USB Warm Winter Mouse Pad with wrist guard. And this is the puppy style, but we do these in elephants and we do them in various other animals too. So if you don't like puppies, it's not the end of the world. But it's there. So imagine if you were listening to this. Imagine if you were listening online and you kind of said, I can do that. I can make something for that. And someone did. They invented it. What's very interesting is if you click on this, customers who view this item also viewed. You get some really weird stuff then. Uh, but we're, this is probably before the watershed, so I can't really go into it. Um, can someone please invent an airport outlet finder app? I need to recharge. Again, when I talked about this in 2012, lots of people went, yes, there are loads of apps that tell me where the Wi-Fi is, but there's very few who tell me where there are plugs. And I've got constant Wi-Fi, but my device is losing charge. And someone came up with it. There's an app now, Plug Finder. And it's crowdsourced. So if you find a plug in an airport, you take a photograph, you geotag it, and then the next person who visits the airport can find the app and find where the plug is. Really simple. And I wonder, this was created, so this tweet was 21st of May 2012. This was released March 2013. Was there someone who was starting to track this phrase, I wish someone invented, and said, I can build that. That's easy to do. And it's in the utilities category. OK, so I wish someone invented. This was our next phrase. And again, we did the same thing with word clouds, and we got some interesting things. So coffee came through. Um, and this is probably something that a lot of people in Ireland can um, appreciate. There has been an explosion in coffee shops in Dublin over the last three or four years. It seems to be that there is a new one opening all the time. And we've developed this real appreciation for good coffee. But we're really bad at making lids. Can someone please invent a takeaway coffee cup lid that never leaks ever? I'm probably my favorite hashtag of the presentation in this day and age. I mean, this is, this is a serious problem. And why is that so difficult? Why is it so difficult to make a good coffee cup top? It shouldn't be. That's something that could definitely be built. Um, other words we found in here that were interesting was water. So a lot of people talked about this. Um, and one of the interesting things for us was I wish someone invented a waterproof iPod or something so you could listen to music while swimming. That exists. You can buy underwater audio, waterproof iPod and swimsuit bundle, so you can wrap it up. Now, if I'm this company, underwater audio, I have to be tracking for these keywords in conversations online. If I'm not, I'm losing customers. People are asking for the product. So they don't know underwater audio's Twitter handle, but they want to buy the product that they sell. So you have to be listening to what is going on there. Other interesting words here was cold, and this was probably where things got a little bit weird for us when we searched in 2012, um, because it, we linked it with this word, pillow. Um, this is a big thing. Uh, wish someone invented a pillow that stayed cold all night. I wish someone invented a pillow that always has a cold side. I would love if someone invented a pillow that always had a cool side. Imagine if someone invented a pillow that stayed cold forever. Why hasn't someone invented a permanently cold pillow? Has someone invented a pillow that doesn't get warm and stays cold? Because they should. They'd get so much money from the ever modest Zoe Thompson. <laughs> this is August 2012. So what's the good news? 
Well, that would be great news, but I reckon she came up with the name because I love this, the Chillo. <laughs> there is a permanently cold pillow you can buy, right? And there's a lovely light-hearted element to this story. But I gave a variation on this presentation prior to the Chillo at a talk maybe two years ago. And someone came up to me in the audience afterwards and they said that a friend of theirs had leukemia. And apparently one of the side effects of treatment is that your head and your face gets really, really hot and it's very hard to regulate the temperature. So a permanently cold pillow is an extremely valuable thing if you're going through certain types of therapy. And now you can actually buy it. You can buy a chillow. So as much as it's nice for all the lighthearted people on Twitter, there's actually a real medical benefit um, to it being developed too. Okay, I wish someone made. How are we doing for time, okay? Yeah. All right, good. So I wish someone made. Smell is probably one of the interesting words we found here. Um, I love the smell of bonfire smoke. I wish someone made a scented candle that could mimic it. Um, and of course, again, captivating candles, campfire smoke scented candle, eight ounces, is available on Amazon.com. Or, as Chris said, they do what's called wood. Um, Joshua, I wish someone made a drink that tastes like the smell of Lenore. Now, Joshua is one of those people that we worry about online because Joshua strikes me as the kind of person that after a while kind of says, well, I've given up waiting for this product. I'm just going to give it a go and see what, we'll see what happens. Well, someone, he's the reason that on the side of the packet says, please do not drink. No matter how good the smell is, please do not drink. Will someone please create, someone please create a bought a checkbox for retargeted ads. I'd love one of these. I actually like the advertising I'm usually served with online. I think it's getting an awful lot better. I start getting ads now that are really specific to me. And I find that actually much better than the random ads I used to get. What pisses me off is when I buy the product and they keep targeting me. Because I do what loads of people do. I do all my research online. I go to the shopping cart. I put it in there. I wait a while. I get my discount vouchers. And then I usually end up calling them anyway because I think I'll get a better deal. And the internet doesn't know this. So for six months after buying the product, I still get the ads. Why isn't there a box that lets me tell people I've bought this, stop selling it to me? Things got a little bit soppy too at times during this. So we found um, love stories. A lot of people came out of movies and said, why has no one made a movie like that about me? I want a love story like that made about me. That actually came through. But what's interesting and what was actually actionable was the idea of apps. So again, I'm sure there's a lot of people in the room who in one way or another are involved with building apps. Um, so Christine Bowen, yo, could someone please invent an app that shows where all the bike racks in Dublin are? And maybe if there's spaces too, if that's okay. Ta. Now there is a Dublin Bikes app. In fact, I think there's a couple of them. But maybe they're not doing what they should be doing. Maybe they're not providing the type of information they want. Or maybe they're just not good enough. Um, so someone wants something and that's what they're asking for. Nicholas Teague, someone please create the app so that every time I see a quoted economic data point, I can easily link to the historical trend line. Go. Now, Nicholas's tweet from back in March 2012 got no retweets, no one replied to him, and it wasn't favorited. Right? And Nicholas isn't really that big a deal. So, Gator Watch, following the power generation, tweeting mostly about other stuff. He's only got 140 followers. It's never been retweeted. This is the kind of one that you skim over, that you don't look at because there's no value. But Nicholas gives us information. He's got a LinkedIn account. And you take one step further, and we find that Nicholas works in the marketing department for wind power services at Siemens Energy. And that changes everything for me. Because I'm a young app developer, and I'm trying to come up with an idea. And I kind of go, I could do that. I could build that app. But why bother building it for this guy, Nicholas, who's got no followers and no one's really asking for it? Well, because Nicholas works now at Siemens Energy. And imagine if you build that app for, for Nicholas, and you say, look, I did that thing you wanted. Here it is. What other apps could you build for Siemens? What doors would that open? What opportunities could be there? Connor Hartley, someone please create an app that allows you to boil a kettle from a different room. That was back in 2012. That's a reality now. The Internet of Things has just made that the way it is. Now you can control your plugs from other rooms. Why has no one invented a see-through toaster yet so you can see exactly how toasted your toast is getting? <laughs> Charcoal for breakfast, probably number two on our list of top favorite hashtags that we've looked at. Really annoying stuff. But of course it exists. The Magi Mix by, Robert, uh, by Robot Coupe version toaster. Now this is probably one of the deluxe lines, <coughs> 24995 that's a lot of money. But there are cheaper ones online that you can buy too. And no more burnt toast. You wait till it's that perfect color and you press the button and it pops it. 
Someone please create an iPhone app that lets you control the cabby stereo. Now, this is not a plug, okay? But I have given this talk, or variations on this talk before, and at the time when I first spoke around this area, Halo was new, and I loved it. Now, my accountant hates it, because I spend far more on taxis now than I ever did before. But he likes the fact that I don't give him a shoebox full of receipts. He just gets a printout and gives out to me for trying to expense things that are personal when they're really um, business expenses. But how cool would it be on your app if next to the button at the bottom that said um, pay by card or pay by cash, that there was a control the cabbie stereo button? So that at half nine or 10 o'clock at night on your way home, you didn't have to listen to the Adrian Kennedy phone show. And instead, you could turn on lyric and kind of soothe the evening away. So to conclude, um, every day online, around the world on social networks, people are asking for faster horses. It is your opportunity and your challenge to create the mechanical horses that they really want. Thank you. Um, companies, our clients have. So we're seeing a real change in what our clients are searching for. Um, it began by searching for themselves a couple of years ago, maybe even longer. And then they started to introduce their competitors into the search set. That's what they were looking for as well. Um, but we're seeing a real shift now towards searching for phrases related to what they do. Um, because the idea of going out and approaching somebody um, who has asked for a product, I think has transitioned from being maybe very intrusive to being acceptable to an extent, particularly if you get your tone right. So I think that from a business development point of view, that's certainly some of our, what some of our clients are doing. And I mean, within the business, we obviously track for anyone who talks about social media monitoring or social media analysis. And whenever they say, I wish someone did, or I would like, you know, we pick that up. So. Any more questions? about the tools that you use for um, tracking these and recording them? And yeah, so, well, we use relatively expensive bespoke software that allows us to put in lots of um, parameters on what we search for. So we can um, search geographically, which is a very big thing for a lot of our clients. A lot of them only want to look at Ireland. They don't want to look at the world. Um, and there are other things that you can do to refine the information that comes through. But there are also lots of free tools for anyone who's in a startup position or maybe is in a small business and doesn't have a budget for something like this. So um, if you get creative, Twitter has an advanced search function, which allows you to use Boolean logic, which is, again, just you know very simple connecting of words. Um, it also allows you to refine your searches geographically, which is OK. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Um, Google Alerts are a really handy thing for blogging around this. People on blogs regularly say, I wish someone built or I wish someone made. So there are lots of free tools that you can use. Typically, the, the way is that the cheaper the tool, the more time it takes you to do. So it depends on what you have. If you have money, you, you tend to sort of come to someone like us or buy a piece of software. If you have time, then there are loads of tools that you can use instead, so. Okay, question over here. It's interesting that the words that you showed us, the keywords, had actually no real relevance to the meaning of what people were looking for when you came to it. Yeah. Is, are people looking for meaning? Can you tell meaning from that, or is it just about keywords? Um, you can, but that tends to be a very manual part of our job. There are, certain, there are two things that make our job difficult. Sentiment analysis um, and meaning. And we're, we had actually, we've probably tested in or around 150 to 200 pieces of software, because uh, there are thousands in the marketplace for sentiment analysis capability. And we're yet to find anything that um, delivers on the promises of their makers. Loads of people promise 70, 80, 90% accuracy. And it, it simply doesn't exist. So that's the massive pain point for us. And it's where we're, we're spending a lot of time now with data scientists trying to, trying to fix that just for us, not even for the world, but just for a handful of clients that, that we work with. Um, meaning, we feel, has to almost come from um, the analyst. Now, Creating a word cloud like that helps because it's the first step, but it's very hard to take meaning from the word cloud alone. You have to drill into the words, see whether they have a correlation. Because sometimes they are relevant. You're right, a lot of the time they're not. And if you make a decision purely based on the most commonly occurring words, you can get real false signals. Um, so at, uh, like for us, I don't, I don't think we will ever become a business where we can get rid of all our staff and just have software. Um, and the business was really set up 
because of that we felt that there was a need for storytellers really I mean you have, we have this information but you need to be able to tell a story with it and I like you say meaning is probably the best word yeah okay my impression too um, is this software that you developed or is there, and you still a lot of manual stuff going on there <laughs> there's so there's two sides to it so we license software so there are uh, there are players in the market a lot of you may be familiar with a company called Radiant 6 they tend to be sort of one of the very big players in social media monitoring we don't work with them but we license three pieces of software from providers very similar to them and we use them to aggregate to find the information and then we started to build our own in-house custom tools to actually analyze it to make sense of it um, okay. part two to that is how sure. far are you away from uh, making this good for me so I've, I've got a company that I can go online and in five minutes I've got an account and I can point it at my company it analyzes me and it tells me based on your data what I should be doing or inventing or yeah, so or, we. Or is that the direction you're going? Yeah, I mean, uh, there are there are two things we do. Um, we do real time information. So we have a dashboard, and that was we worked with um, a guy called James Eggers, who Intercom unfortunately poached and brought to San Francisco for the summer. And um, this unbelievably talented um, young developer who's just finishing first year of his degree in Trinity. And we started working with him when he was in fifth year of school. And he said to us, he came in for a few weeks as an intern, and he said, you know you can start to make this available in a really simple dashboard. And we had thought about it, but we didn't know how easy it would be to do it. So over the last 18 months, we've been working on developing a really pared down dashboard. Because what we found was our clients didn't want loads of noise. They just wanted very few things. So the real time stuff, we can have set up in an hour. Um, and our biggest clients, the utility players and the banks and things like that, use that to track in real time what's being said. The analytics side, the end of week, end of month, end of quarter, end of year, is still very manual heavy because we don't give the presentation as a PDF uh, and we don't email it to you. We present it in person. So an analyst actually comes in, they sit you down and sometimes you can have 10 or 15 people from the business and we present it a bit like this and then you interrogate the data. And for us at the moment, we don't see that being replaced by a software solution. We think that the value comes from the actual this the conversation because then you can ask the questions of it and that's when you get meaning so someone says why is that word in the word cloud it doesn't make any sense and we can have that kind of back and forth so. okay we'll have one more one more question um, okay two, no, two okay on, yeah maybe. what is your uh, normalization process like a um, um, it's a lot of the uh, data isn't it then yeah you has to pick up like a um, how do you clean out the crud? Oh, how do we get rid of the junk? Yeah, um, a lot of it comes from just experience. So like over time, so we have a, we work with um, a mobile phone operator in Ireland who's got a very generic name um, and that doesn't really refine it down. Uh, but this mobile phone operator gets an awful lot of mentions of what would be their brand completely unrelated to them because the term is generic. So what you do over time is you learn what these exclusion words are. Um, you learn who individuals who talk about the product or service but aren't really talking about the product or service are. And you start to just refine and it gets better and better and better. But again, there's always an element of manual filtering. So we look at, our team look at a lot of data every day. And there's still a lot of just tick boxing, categorization sentiment. We, we're yet to find a way to get past that. So, so yeah. it's not when a machine learning process involved? That's, we've just got that right. And we've only got it right for one client. So we've spent the last year working with two data scientists on a machine learning tool. And the idea, what we found was that everyone at the moment is trying to solve the problem. Well, a lot of companies are trying to solve the problem of sentiment analysis. It's a big, big problem. Um, and huge players, Microsoft, SAP, all the big, big players in the world. And they're pumping millions, tens of millions into this. And we knew we couldn't compete. We knew we couldn't go up against them. We didn't have the resources or anything like it. So instead, we pared it down, and instead of looking at even a single network like Twitter or Facebook, or looking at a single country like Ireland, or even an industry, we said, could we do one for an individual client? So we took our biggest client, and we took data we had manually analyzed for the last three and a half years. That's literally where an analyst has said, positive, negative, positive, negative. So we knew the data was clean. Mm -hmm. We had about, about, a quarter, about a similar number, about a quarter million results over the three years for the client. And we've been training the machine. And we've got it to, and don't maybe hold me to this yet for anyone else, but we've got it to an 80% accuracy level. And the best thing for us is that 
every other tool we've used, when it doesn't know, so that even if they got to 80, that other 20 just gets pushed into neutral. That's what happens when it doesn't know, it defaults to neutral. And what we've managed to do is the machine, instead of defaulting to neutral, gives it back to us. So what the analyst does is it cuts the analyst's time by 80%, but they still get the 20% that the machine doesn't know, and they tag that. Then they give it back to the machine, and the machine learns a little more. So if we got to 81 by the end of the year, or 82%, that would be huge. But for us, that's been a, probably the biggest breakthrough since we set up the business. So. We won't get your, your questions, sorry. But sorry. We'll, we'll catch up later on with Stephen. So round of applause for Stephen. Thank you very much.